Medicinal plants are said to be nature's gift to human beings to promote a disease-free healthy life, here in reference to amla, a fruit, the Indian gooseberry, described as an Ayurvedic wonder. You hear a lot of that larger-than-life talk about amla coming out of Indian medical journals. Who can forget amla, a wonderberry in the treatment and prevention of cancer? Amla is so revered that you find serious scientists at serious academic institutions and serious peer-reviewed medical journals making statements like this. Every part of the Indian gooseberry plant has its unique therapeutic characteristic for the remedy of almost all the ailments, and can be adopted as a bold italics, single bullet against disease. OK, then. I first ran across it in this famous article, looking at the total antioxidant content of thousands of different foods. I did a series of videos about it ages ago, and to my surprise, the number one most antioxidant-packed single whole food on the planet, on average, was amla, dried powdered Indian gooseberries, beating out the prior heavyweight champion cloves with, just for comparison's sake, up to 100 times or more antioxidants by weight than blueberries. So here's this fruit that has enjoyed a hallowed position in Ayurveda, the ancient system of medicine in India, so hallowed it was mythologically pegged as the first tree in the universe. Uh, so for thousands of years, before we even knew what an antioxidant was, uh, they were revering this plant that just so happens to turn out to be the most antioxidant-packed fruit on the planet Earth. OK, you've got my attention, but I still need to see it put to the test. Well, indigenous tribal healers used amla to treat diabetes, so researchers decided to give it a try. This is the study that originally bowled me over. In fact, the subject of one of my first Nutrition Facts videos of all time over five years ago, the effect of amla fruit on the blood sugars and cholesterol levels of normal subjects and type 2 diabetic patients. In my video, I talked about the jaw-dropping effects of five cents worth of this powdered fruit, five pennies worth, compared to a diabetes drug. But what about the cholesterol effects? If you take healthy individuals and give them a placebo sugar pill, nothing much happens to their cholesterol. Ideally, we want our total cholesterol under 150. This is a pretty healthy group. The average cholesterol in the U.S. is over 200, which is where the diabetics started out in this study. And when you give them placebo pills, nothing much happens either. But give people just about a half teaspoon of amla powder a day, uh, not some extract or something, just dried Indian gooseberries, a powdered fruit, and this is what happens. That's like a 35-40% drop in three weeks. Absolutely astounding. Uh, that's the kind of thing we see like you know, six months after putting people on statin drugs. What we care about most is LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, shooting for under at least 70, ideally. No impact of the placebos, but again, just about a half teaspoon of amla, which would cost you about five cents a day, so like a, a buck fifty a month, and boom. These results knocked my socks off. I mean, they're just unbelievable. That's why I was so excited after all these years to dig back into the animal literature to see if these findings had been confirmed or replicated elsewhere. So I typed AMLA into PubMed and waded through all the papers on using AMLA to decrease methane in cow farts and speed the growth of chickens. Or hey, what about AMLA ice cream? After all, AMLA is packed with fiber and phytonutrients. In contrast, ice cream is not. Therefore, and indeed AMLA incorporated into ice cream increases the antioxidant capacity, though I would not recommend it for cholesterol lowering. Ah, but here we go, a comparative clinical study of AMLA head-to-head -head against the cholesterol-lowering statin drug simvastatin, uh, sold as Zocor, which I'll cover next. Indian gooseberries, otherwise known as amla, have been touted as everything from a cancer fighter to a hair tonic to a refrigerant, whatever that means, what, like Freon? 
not to mention a snake venom detoxifier, complete with fancy diagrams, but based on what kind of research? Yes, dietary intake of both turmeric and amla increases the lifespan of fruit flies, but do we really care about the effects of amla on the lifespan, or the sexual behavior, for that matter, of fruit flies? How do you even study the sexual behavior of fruit flies? Why, obviously, you just introduce a virgin female and a bachelor male into an Ellen's Watt T.O. mating chamber. Can you imagine having an insect mating chamber named after you? And it looks like there were two fighting over naming rights, so they had to go with both. Then it's just a matter of getting out a stopwatch. 20 minutes is the average duration, but almost a half hour on AMLA, the studly beast, and it dropped the mating latency, the time between when they were introduced to one another in the chamber when they started getting busy, from 10 down to 7. Seconds! They don't mess around. Well, actually, they do mess around, and quite rapidly. And on AMLA, they lay more eggs, and more hatch into larvae. But just like when you hear AMLA is the best medicine to increase lifespan, you're probably not thinking about flies. When you read about AMLA may be a potent aphrodisiac, you're probably not thinking, more maggots. Now, there was this study that found extraordinary improvements in total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol in actual humans. But that was compared to placebo. What about compared to simvastatin, a leading cholesterol-lowering drug sold as Zocor? Treatment with the drug produced significant reductions in cholesterol, as one would expect, but so did the AMLA. In fact, you could hardly tell which was which. Now, note this was only about a 10 to 15% drop in total in LDL cholesterol. In this study, the AMLA dose was only 500 mg, which is like a tenth of a teaspoon, so smaller than the eighth of a teaspoon a day. And it wasn't just the powdered fruit, but the powdered juice of the fruit, which may have made a difference. How about versus Lipitor, the cholesterol-lowering drug known as atorvastatin? No effect of taking placebos, but significant improvements for the drug. And significant improvements for two AMLA doses, but again, only about 15% or so. Did they just use the juice again? No, were some patented extract of AMLA. So instead of 5 cents a day, it's 50 cents a day, and doesn't seem to work as well. But because there's this proprietary version, at least there's someone willing to pony up the funds to do the research. It's like the cancer story. For Indian gooseberries to become relevant clinically, they're praying that patentable derivatives be synthesized. Without the possibility of patents, the pharmaceutical industry isn't going to invest in the research. Their shareholders wouldn't let them. It's patents over patients. But without that research, how can we ever prove its worth, or worthlessness for that matter? So drug and supplement industry interest in patenting natural food product remedies is a double-edged sword. Without it, there would never have been this study, showing not only benefits for cholesterol, but also arterial function, reducing artery stiffness in the two AMLA extract groups, and the drug group, but not placebo, as well as a dramatic drop in inflammation, C-reactive protein levels cut in half, so AMLA or at least AMLA extracts, uh, may be a good therapeutic alternative to statins in diabetic patients with artery dysfunction, because it has many of the beneficial effects of the statins, but without the well-known potential adverse side effects of the drugs, including muscle damage or liver dysfunction. The AMLA extract was also compared to the blood-thinning drugs, aspirin and Plavix, uh, often prescribed after heart attacks and achieved about three-quarters of the same platelet aggregation inhibiting effect as the drugs, significantly increasing the bleeding and clotting time, where they poke you with a needle and see how many seconds it takes you to stop dripping. So that's actually a good thing if you have a stent or something that you don't want to clog up. Uh, but it didn't thin the blood outside the normal range, so it may not unduly raise the risk of major bleeding. It also appears to decrease the effects of stress on the heart, they had people plunge their hand into ice water and keep it there until the pain became unbearable. Uh, this 
causes your arteries to constrict and your blood pressure to go up, but not as much if you're taking amla extract. Good to know for your next ice bucket challenge.